Hi, Chem students, and welcome to your fourth and final video in the measurement series over dimensional analysis. For this particular lesson, make sure to have out your notes, something to write with, and a calculator will be super helpful for this one. Okay, so dimensional analysis. It's an important method of solving mathematical problems requiring unit conversion, so changing from one unit to another. Do not attempt to do these problems using your own method. We are in training here, and you will have to be able to solve problems using this technique. They're going to get much, much, much harder in chemistry. But I'm starting off slow and teaching you this technique. Okay, so one really important piece in dimensional analysis is called a conversion factor. So let me explain. Conversion factors are ratios relating to amounts that are equal. So for example, if eggs cost $1.44 per dozen, this is the same as saying $1.44 equals one dozen. They're not literally equal, of course, but they're equivalent in the sense that if you have one dozen eggs, then you've spent $1.44. To write this expression as a conversion factor, just write one amount over the other. So you're writing it like it's a fraction. You can have $1.44 over a dozen, or you can have the $1.44 on the bottom and the dozen on top. So let's have a moment to practice writing these conversion factors. So here's our statement. There are 60 seconds in a minute. So one minute equals 60 seconds. So in my first conversion factor, I have the minute on top and the 60 seconds on bottom. In the second one, I've got the 60 seconds on top and the minute on the bottom. So these are flippable, or you can write the reciprocals and they're the same. It's just taking a statement in a sentence and putting it in a conversion factor or fraction form. So go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to try these next three on your own. When you get back, I will have the answers revealed. Okay, welcome back. So, so hopefully you did these correct. If you did not, you had some issues, then please pause the video. Do not continue. Raise your hand, ask your teacher what the heck is going on, and get some clarification before you continue. More on conversion factors. In a conversion factor, the top part equals the bottom part. In other words, a conversion factor is always equal to one because when you divide something by another quantity that it's equal to, it's like dividing that number by itself, which equals one. We use conversion factors as a way of converting between different units of measurement. Since conversion factors have a value of one, when you multiply by them, although the number and the units may change, the value stays the same since you're just multiplying by one. In order to use a conversion factor, we need to align the units so that the units we're trying to get rid of cancel out, and we're left with the units we are looking for. In order to cancel something out, you do the opposite operation. Okay, I'm starting with a domino that has a one on top. And so what I'm gonna do is in my next domino, the one is on bottom so that those can cancel. What I'm left with is the five on top, which gives me my final answer. So if something's gonna cancel, they have to be opposites of each other. One's on top and one is on the bottom. That is why they cancel. The question says, how many minutes are there in 3,480 seconds? So we start with 3,480 seconds, but we're looking for minutes. So my conversion factor that relates minutes to seconds is that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. The seconds go on the bottom so that they can cancel, and I have minutes on the top. Now when I'm solving for my final answer, I'm going to multiply 3,480 times 1 divided by 60. So multiply across the top and divide by the bottom, and I get 58, and my unit is minutes. So seconds have canceled and I'm left with minutes as my unit. So to get the number answer, multiply across the top, divide by the bottom, but to get the unit answer, you just cancel out. So it says, the question started with a large number of small units and ended with a small number of large units. So here are some important understandings. All that changed was the unit used to measure the time. It is more understandable to say, I'll be back in 58 minutes, as opposed to 3,480 seconds, though they mean and take up the same amount of time. They literally mean the same thing, but they're just changing 
the unit of time so that it is more easy to understand. In chemistry, we will need to convert between units to solve various problems. Dimensional analysis is a vital skill that you must learn if you want to pass this course. Boom. You really need to understand dimensional analysis or you won't be able to solve pretty much any problems in this class. So get used to it. Okay, so every dimensional analysis problem has three parts. The first is the unknown in its unit. The second is the given amount in its unit. And then the third part is the conversion factor or factors which relate or connect the given to the unknown. Okay, so let's do an example together. The question says, what is the cost of two dozen eggs if eggs are $1.44 per dozen? So I'm going to identify the different pieces. So what is the cost? The cost is my unknown. It's what I'm asking to solve for. Two dozen eggs is my given. So I'm telling you that I have two dozen eggs. What do they cost? And then it's telling me $1.44 is the cost of a dozen eggs. That's my conversion factor. It's relating the cost to the quantity. So to set this up, I'm always going to start with my given first. I'm going to start with the two dozen eggs, my given. Then I'm going to use the conversion factor, the $1.44 per dozen, to relate the given to the unknown. It's going to be important here that I put dozen on the bottom so that they can cancel, and the $1.44 on top. So again, in order to get my number answer, I'm going to do 2 times $1.44, and I get $2.88. But I'm going to cancel out dozen eggs and get a dollar as my final unit. So $2.88 is my final answer. Okay, let's try another one. If a car can go 80 kilometers in one hour, how far in kilometers can the car go in 8.5 hours? Okay. So if a car can go 80 kilometers in one hour, that is a conversion factor. That's relating some information to me. How far? That is my unknown. It's asking for a distance, and it's saying in kilometers. Can the car go in 8.5 hours? That is my given. Okay, so I'm going to set up this problem. I always start with the given. So I'm going to start with the 8.5 hours. Then I'm going to use the conversion factor to relate my given to the unknown. So my conversion factor is 80 kilometers in one hour. So what should go on the bottom? 80 kilometers or one hour? Well, hopefully you said one hour so that hours can cancel. 80 kilometers will go on the top. The unit hour is going to cancel out so that I end up with kilometers as my final unit. In order to get the numeric answer, I'm going to multiply across the top and divide by the bottom. So I'm going to multiply 8.5 times 80, and when I do that, I get 680 kilometers. So having seen me do one of these for you, I would like you to pause the video and try to do one all on your own. I know it's brand new, but just try. When you come back, I'll explain how to do it correctly. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and identify and label these pieces first. So, if a chemical costs $50 per gram, what is the cost of 100 grams of the chemical? Well, $50 per gram is my conversion factor because it's relating money in grams. What is the cost? So, my unknown is cost, and 100 grams is my given. That's what I'm starting with. So I always start dimensional analysis with my given. So I'm going to start with the 100 grams, and then I'm going to use my conversion factor to get me from my given to my unknown. So I'm wanting to go from grams to cost, which is in dollars. So grams needs to go on the bottom. Well, there's $50 per gram. So one gram goes on the bottom. $50 is going to go on top. The unit gram is going to cancel so that I end up with dollars as the unit for my final answer. I'm going to do 100 times 50, and I get 5,000. So $5,000 is my final answer. 
We can also use dimensional analysis to solve for the metric conversions that we learned a little bit earlier, we use the decimal hopping. These conversion factors will have a few special properties that I want us to cover. So the conversion factor will always contain a one. The one will always go with the larger unit of the two in the conversion factor. One of the units in the conversion factor always needs to be the base unit, needs always go through the base unit. For example, when converting from milligrams to kilograms, you will need to go through grams in the middle. Okay, so here's an example. It says, how many kilometers are in 587,000 meters? So the 587,000 meters is my given, so I'm gonna start with that. And how many kilometers, this is my unknown, that's what I wanna end with. So I'm going from meters to kilometers. I'm gonna start with 587,000 meters. And I need a conversion factor that's going to relate meters to kilometers. Well, which one's bigger, a meter or a kilometer? Okay. We've got King Henry danced before drinking chocolate milk. So it is the one far to the left, correct? Yay, it is. Okay, so it gets the one. The very large unit gets the one. And then we want to know how many meters are in one kilometer. Well, a kilometer is 10, 100, 1,000 times larger than our base unit. Remember how we move over every step? It's 10 times bigger. So 10, 100, 1,000. So there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So my meters are going to cancel. I'm going to end up with kilometers as my final unit. In order to figure out the number answer, I'm going to do 587,000 times 1 divided by 1,000. And I get 587 kilometers as my final answer. Let's try this next one, and then I'm going to let you do the third one all by yourself. It says, how many milliliters are in 4.56 liters of solution? So the 4.56 liters is my given, milliliters is my unknown. So 4.56 liters, and I'm going to milliliters. So I need a conversion factor that is going to connect liters to milliliters. Liters goes on the bottom because I want it to cancel. So what's bigger, a milliliter or a liter? Well, here is a liter, it's my base unit, and milli is far to the right. So the liter is bigger, so it gets the one. And then there are 10, 100, 1,000 milliliters in a liter. So liters are gonna cancel. 4.56 times 1,000 gives me 4,560 milliliters as my final answer. So I'm hoping this is making some sense to you. If it's not and I've lost you, please pause the video and ask your teachers for some help so I don't lose you further. If you're good to go, let's continue. Next one says, how many kilograms are in 4,500,000 milligrams? This one's a little bit harder, so I'm actually gonna do it for you. So this is our given. Remember, our given is gonna have a number with it. Then how many kilograms, that's my unknown. So I'm starting with, 4,500,000 milligrams, and I am going to kilograms. Well, remember if, we're, if a base unit isn't your given or your unknown, you have to stop in the middle. So I'm gonna go from milligrams to grams to kilograms. So this is actually gonna take me two steps in order to do this. So I'm gonna go milligrams to grams, and then grams to kilograms. So notice I've set up this whole problem without even using numbers, really. I've just set it up with units, and then I'm gonna put the numbers in last. So what's bigger, a gram or a milligram? A gram, so it's gonna get the one. What's bigger, a kilogram or gram? The kilogram, so it gets the one. And now I'm gonna place the numbers in to show that these are equal. So there are 1,000 milligrams in one gram, and there are 1,000 grams and one kilogram. So I've set this whole thing up using just the cancellation of units. So milligrams will cancel, grams will cancel, and I'll end up with kilograms, which is what I want. 
So to get my final numeric part of my answer, I'm going to do 4,500,000 times 1 times 1. And I'll get 4,500,000. Then I will divide by 1,000 and divide by 1,000 again in order to get my final answer, which is 4.5 kilograms. It says, as you saw in number 3 above, some dimensional analysis problems require more than one conversion factor to solve. This is the first conversion factor. This is the second. The same basic principles apply. You will just have more steps and more unit cancellations in your problem. So let's try the next one. All right, this one's kind of fun, and I'm going to make it a little challenge for you. I'm going to let you try to do it on your own. So I'll read it to you and then let you try it. An astronaut needed some more hydrogen for his fuel cell. He asked a space alien for 48 grams of hydrogen. The alien could only measure the hydrogen in zooms. If five zings equals four grams, two warps equal three zings, and nine zooms equal five warps, how many zooms does the astronaut need? I'll pause the video, and when you're done, unpause it, and I will give you the answer. Okay, welcome back. I hope you were able to solve this. So hopefully you started with the gram conversion factor. So we're starting with 48 grams. So on the bottom, I've got four grams, which is equal to five zings. So that grams will cancel. Then next I'm gonna use that three zings is equal to two warps and putting zings on bottom so they cancel. And then the last conversion factor I use is five warps equals nine zooms. So that warps cancel. So I'm going to show that my units cancel by crossing them out. And I'm getting to what I want, which is zooms. To do the math, I'm going to do 48 times 5 times 2 times 9. So you multiply across the top, get an answer, and then you divide by what's on bottom. So divided by 4, divided by 3, divided by 5. If you did this correctly, your final answer will be... 72 zooms. I hope you enjoyed this lesson today and that it made sense to you. If you need some extra help, make sure to ask your teacher for some assistance during your practice today. Have a great day and a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.